Well, I just came out this morning to collect all the sap that was boiled down in here over the last uh, couple days. Basically, maple cream. There's burnt doesn't smell good <laughs> it's wrecked pans probably a mess too I don't know what I'm gonna do complete fail complete disaster there there was probably a good three gallons of syrup in here maybe more than that it, this was a huge pan a huge boil 180 plus gallons of sap went into this. Just completely destroyed. Well, that's what I'm pulling out of there. Putting in a bucket. The rest I'm just going to dissolve. I'll soak this down and keep adding warm water to it and draining it out and washing it out. What a mess. Unfortunately, you'd think, man, that'd be good. It's like maple candy, maple cream. Well, yeah, but it's all burnt. <laughs> so I tasted it, believe me. I thought, huh, maybe I can make something out of this. Nope. It all tastes awful. It's all burnt on the bottom or burnt everywhere. It just is overcooked, so it uh, doesn't taste good at all. But I'm going to save this. I wonder what I can, I don't know, make some kind of animal feed out of it or something? I don't know. So what happened? Well, this was a, a, a learning experience for me, that's for sure. And it's too bad that it had to come at the cost of, of this much uh, good syrup because uh, this was my second big boil that I've done this season. Um, I, the first boil went great, and I was able to take everything in, finish it in the house, and we ended up with a couple gallons of nice uh, finished syrup, um, and that went really well. I had been I've been collecting for quite a few days uh, sap to put in here and I've been boiling it over a few days, about three days worth of boiling um, off and on and to get it down to where it was at this point. Last night I was finishing up that boil. I had come out here at about midnight last night and there was uh, about an inch and a half to two inches in the pan and the fire was was just about out. There was just some coals left in the bottom and it was still kind of boiling and so uh, I, I wanted to make sure it didn't overcook and so I brought the hose out here and I sprayed the whole inside of the firebox out, put the fire out, soaked the coals, soaked the walls, soaked everything in there, made sure there was no more sizzling or anything. I mean I put that thing out and I closed it all up so no air could get into the firebox or at least uh, not much uh, and went to bed thinking that tomorrow or, you know this morning I would come out and collect up all of our um, almost finished uh, syrup here out of the pan it's pretty close it was pretty close to syrup last night and take it inside and finish it up well somehow the the coals that were all on the bottom there must have just it, this holds a lot of heat these cinder blocks and things and what I'm thinking happened is it just it just evaporated out all the water I had put in there and there was still some coal somewhere that, that got going again and, and the fire kind of came back to life. And then it just just boiled this thing and or steamed it, probably low heat, but just enough to to keep uh, keep boiling or keep steaming what was in there until it evaporated down to, to nothing. So unfortunately it is a complete loss. Uh, everything that was in here, you know, Man, what a what a loss! I mean, there's a lot of hours of of collecting sap and and uh, and processing and and boiling and a lot of wood. I mean, I burnt, burned a lot of wood and um, it was good syrup too. I was ready. It was it was looking really good. It was my best batch, so that's too bad. But unfortunately, I guess this is a hard lesson for me to learn. Um, what I should have done was last night when it was finished, I should have uh, brought it inside. I should have uh, taken the time last night to bring this stuff in, put it in, in a couple buckets, uh, bring all the finished stuff inside, fill the pan with water and let it sit. Uh, and that, that would have been the, the right thing for me to do. That would have prevented this, this disaster. So 
I learned a good lesson next time I will do that but it came at the cost of uh, I don't know I mean a few gallons of syrup at least I would say it was at least three three gallons of syrup and there maybe even more this was a pretty good boil I had going so um, it's it's unfortunate so a lot of people uh, are probably curious about the, the evaporator, how, how well has it been working. Well, that's part of the problem. This thing works. I would put this evaporator up against any, and I mean any, commercial evaporator that there is on the market. Um, this thing with the cinder blocks, I mean, you'll notice in here, there's really no cracking. None of the blocks have cracked. Um, there's a, a lot of the cement that I put on, you know, patched the cracks up and stuff like that. That has all cracked away, which I kind of expected. Um, but the, the cinder blocks themselves have not cracked. They're all filled with dirt. And man, does this thing hold the heat. Um, I measured this yesterday. I could not add sap fast enough. I was out here every hour adding five gallon buckets. This thing was boiling probably 20 gallons per hour um, when I had it really going yesterday. Um, I just, you know, that's why I haven't been able to do any small boils with it. It just boils too quick. I mean, this thing just cranks. So it's a great large scale. I mean, there's no amount of sap that I could have um, that would be too much for this. I mean, I could just run this thing 24-7 if I needed to, but I could boil through hundreds and hundreds of gallons of sap with this easy. I had plans to use this to collect out in the, in the forest here and then uh, bring it up, and I figured I would have too much excess, and I would be, you know, the, I figured I would be waiting on the evaporator. And so I had this IBC tote that I thought I would store all the excess in and then to, uh, pipe it in. I've never had to use that. Um, I've, I've basically stored it in here, put it in the evaporator. Once I fire that thing up, um, I'll burn through. I could burn through several of these, you know, in a day, um, evaporating it through with no problem just in one day. So I've never needed extra storage. So I know a lot of people talked about ventilation and things, and what I've been doing is I just take this window out, and I've got these little fans. I put this fan in here. Um, that one actually stopped working, and the majority of the time, strangely, the the wind's been kind of breezing through the greenhouse this way and out that, that window, so um, I've got this little fan up here keeping the steam, you know, as it comes up off here, this kind of blows it over towards that, and then those fans suck it out. Uh, and then I also have a fan um, from the ceiling over here that helps pull a draft in through the door. I keep the door open. Um, a lot of people wonder about the greenhouse plastic being sticky. Well, it's not sticky at all. There's, you know, just the water vapor in here and it hasn't been an issue. Um, that steam just gets blown right out of here and uh, it gets pretty foggy in here, but it uh, works really well. I've had no issues with like the greenhouse plastic or smoke or the fire or anything like that. It's been working really, really well in here. So is the pan wrecked? Well, I don't think so. Um, and it's going to take quite a bit of time and cleaning to get it back to where it needs to be. But uh, I don't think it got scorched because there was actually liquid um, syrup still underneath all of the hardened candy at the top. Uh, so I think that kind of actually saved the, the bottom of the pan. But uh, only time will tell. I'm going to have to take me a long time to clean this thing out. I'm going to have to boil through some water in it. And what a mess. Well, it was a sad morning here on the, uh, the the family farm coming out to this. I was so, so excited to get in and bottle up a bunch more syrup. And uh, I was going to take you guys along for the bottling process and everything on this batch. So we'll do that on the next batch. I should have at least one or two more good boils uh, in the season. Uh, <laughs> so we'll take you guys along for that. But uh, sometimes these learning experiences come with hard lessons. And this is uh, no exception to that. Just like the greenhouse failing um hopefully i can improve the system here and, and make things better so this will never ever ever happen again here um on, on the farm so i always i don't i don't shy away from sharing failures with you guys um this is part of yes this was this sucked <laughs> this was sad uh i i was very frustrated this morning when i came out to see this but you know this is part of life and this is part of what happens you know we're trying to do we're, we're blazing trails things we've never done before uh, I'm trying to do this as a business and and this is a huge setback you know financially and the time that was invested into this but I can't sit around and think about that I, I got to move forward um, and uh, that's just how it is you know things are gonna go wrong tractors break down crops fail you know things happen natural disasters things are gonna happen and we have to learn how to get through this stuff Otherwise, you're just going to give up and you're not going to make it. So 
At least that's what I keep telling myself. Uh, but we're going to make it through this, and uh, we're looking forward to the next one. So I'll take you guys along for uh, the whole process from start to finish and bottling the uh, syrup inside in a later video. So look forward to that. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.